I'm posting this video and there will probably be more, because I feel that many light workers are disempowered and fall prey to manipulators. Perhaps this will help them to deal with manipulation better, whether they are manipulating others or being manipulated or both. I related a story about many people I've known in the past whose relationship with me was based on my helping them, not a relationship of them wanting to know me for who I was, but a codependent relationship of one more capable person, the rescuer, helping the ones who aren't capable of fending for themselves, the victims. I believe those of strong light energy tend to attract the needy, or at least those who believe themselves to be needy because they haven't pooled their resources to get their act together. My life would often become overwhelmed by the feeling that I wasn't living for myself but for the neighbors or people who called themselves my friends, who had overwhelming needs and either couldn't or wouldn't fulfill them themselves. I see this as a societal problem because we are disempowered by the deep state as a way of living. So many people's perception of themselves is inadequate to meet the challenges of life and it's growing as our economy swings ever more out of proportion to our income. I've heard of so many success stories of people who lived practically on skid row who got it together to create a better life for themselves, or people who lived a financially affluent life who gave it all up to live in a way that resonated with their true values, not their financial values. These are examples of self-empowerment. So people can change. I believe in teaching people to teach themselves as opposed to doing everything for everyone who asks. We need to be empowered to take care of ourselves as we become multidimensional people, not to manipulate others into doing for us what we feel we can't do for ourselves because this leaves us disempowered. I've learned that my sense of disempowerment was exactly equal to the out-of-controlness of my addictive habits and my life. In my 20s and 30s my life was out of control on both counts. Eventually I took control of my life back and my addictions weakened their hold over me. First step was walking away from my toxic narcissistic parents who continued to abuse me. It was me or them so I chose for myself. They were my greatest teachers. My definition of friendship is defined by this standard, anyone who wants something of me, especially if it is continuously, is someone who wants my help. A friend is someone who wants to know me as a person. A friend is not someone who tries to manipulate me into getting what they want from me. How can you tell you're manipulating someone? You drop broad hints that you're in need when you're around them. If you find yourself always talking about how you need something whenever the same person is listening, you need to look at that. Being assertive is asking a question in such a way that the person can answer yes or no. This way respects their free will. Manipulating them doesn't. There is nothing wrong with helping other people. However, when it becomes habitual on either side, either the giving or the taking, there are often hidden reasons for this and they need to be discovered. Also, you define how you want to help. If it's something you don't want to do, then don't do it. If you don't retain control over what you will and won't do, then others can run ramshackle over your life and you'll lose control over it and you could start feeling disempowered. Ivo Manipulation and powerlessness is a problem on your world due to the circumstances created by your controllers. People who manipulate generally feel unworthy of getting what they are asking for. Their self-esteem is low, which is a problem for anyone who still has a shadow and is unconnected to source. The ego cannot supply you with self-esteem, only the soul can. For those who lack or have a limited connection to soul energy, the self-esteem is always poor. It is expressed in terms of inferiority or superiority, and encourages role-playing where the role is not as an equal but as an inferior or a superior to another. These roles are created by the matrix as well. This leads to poor communication in the form of lack of assertiveness, or manipulative tactics. When you think about it, manipulation is an attempt to trick someone into giving you what you desire. Sharon has been on the receiving end of this quite often in her life and she will describe these circumstances and what she did about them in this video. Me, okay, thanks Ivo. I see you're busy with something and can't spend time on this video so I'll continue. Ivo, my love, we have much work to do with your planet at the moment. Me, okay. Thank you. Kiss kiss. One of the things I think we can all agree to is that manipulative people want something from you. 
I'm not saying that all people who want something from you are manipulative, but those that are always see you as a provider of something they want. And perhaps they fear you won't give it to them, so they try to trick you out of it. I used to get tricked by people before I woke up and realized that the people who were doing this weren't playing straight with me. They were hiding their true intentions. That's the second sign of a manipulator someone who is hiding their true intentions. So you always have to figure out, what does this person want from me? And am I willing to give it? Often, it's the latter that they're trying to sneak around. Your free will to do as you please. In the case of the light worker, it's your free will to believe as you want. There are many influencers and not all have your best interests or the best interests of this planet in mind. I tend to keep my guard up because I still get approached by people who try to trick me into doing for them. I have very stringent boundaries around who gets to be my friend and who I do favors for, and when I say favors they tend to be one-offs, not a lifetime of doing for other people to the point my life feels overwhelmed by their needs and control over it seems to be slipping away. Any of you helpers been there? You have these new friends who suddenly overwhelm your life to the point you don't even know who you are anymore? You're just starting to see yourself as an extension of them and alive just to meet their needs? I have. I'm aware that some marriages go that way as well. It's called a control game and the one being controlled is you. Now I have a boundary that I keep with myself, I don't give anything to anyone until I know what they're approaching me for. All you get is my smile and my company. If that's not enough, well. I can hear Ivo in my head. He always listens to me and he says he lives for my smile and my company. He's such a sweetheart. When I was younger I used to wonder why so many guys just came and went without engaging in a relationship with me. I used to think it was my fault. It was because I said no. LOL so they went elsewhere for sex. So the first two steps in figuring out who's a manipulator, look for indirect, sly, sneaky types of conversation. Hinting is a big one. Step 2, don't make the mistake that their intentions are the same as yours. Always having had friendly intentions, and an understanding of relations as being loving, I didn't get what men were up to half the time. Did life change me? You bet it did. It made me more aware of my own intentions, my own plans for my life, and not to get sidetracked off into others' plans for me anymore. A firm no does it, and I walk away. I understand people have varying intentions. Whatever I label them as doesn't even matter. It's whether they align with my own and we can create a mutually satisfactory, cooperative relationship that counts. One of respect. Another method. Some people like to make promises that they don't keep in order to obligate you into doing things for them. They say they'll do this for you and they'll do that for you, and we should go here together and we should go there together, I'll take you here, we'll do this. And none of it happens. But by that time, you're feeling obligated and so you start doing for them. Okay, well, next weekend when we go to Sunny Acres Resort, you'll need gas so here's 50 bucks. So next weekend, Sunny Acres doesn't happen and you're out 50 bucks. Do you see where I'm going with this? Wait to help with the gas money when you're leaving to go home from Sunny Acres, not before. If Sunny Acres doesn't happen, if you don't get your money back, and all sorts of other promises are unfulfilled, that's a red flag. Look for patterns. Another point, look for sentences that start with, you should. When someone is telling you what you should be doing, they could be trying to manipulate you. There is always an implication of, I'll love you more when you do what I tell you in these sentences. You should lose weight. You should grow your hair long. You should be nicer. Get it? When you hear you should sentences, it's a red flag. Also be careful if you use them on yourself. I know when I was younger I was just too trusting thinking that nobody would be with me unless they were as altruistic as I was. They couldn't be trying anything nasty. I was very naive. I now realize that opposites do attract and not everyone is of the same intention. Yes, the galactics say Earth is a learning school. It sure is. 
bribery falls into that category as well. People who bribe you with gifts in order to access yours. Salespeople like to make you feel obligated. Don't. Or they will offer you a free trip to Florida when you buy this vacuum cleaner at 28% interest. Yet, yeah, I bought the vacuum cleaner at 28% interest but never bothered going to Florida. It was a good vacuum cleaner. Lasted a long time. The gruesome oversized picture of a dust mite that he showed me helped close that sale. Which is the truth, there are dust mites but they're not the size of that picture. That was a manipulation to create fear. Fact is, there will always be dust mites, no matter what vacuum you buy. The minute you vacuum them, there will be more again. Dust happens. You can't avoid it. So he used the truth and expanded it into a horror story. Playing on my emotions to make a sale. That's the other thing, manipulators will play on your feelings. Trying to make you feel bad in some way for not giving them what they want. I find people who solicit donations for charities love to make you feel guilty for not giving. Manipulators will use guilt, fear, and shame to sell you their story. Like the salesman I just mentioned who manipulated me with the oversized picture, creating a fear response. I see this going on in the light community as well some are scaring other light workers to lower their vibration. What their goal is is to lower your vibration and they use scare tactics to do it. Don't buy into it. I remember another sales pitch I sat through. I was 19 and the lady who had sold my friend housewares, asked for telephone numbers of her friends. So she gave out mine. I told my friend not to give out my number after that. Of course the friend thinks they're doing everyone a favor so they agree. I'm just a bit different. LOL all I could think of is how stupid I'd feel like if I fell for any of the lines this lady was using on me. The lady showed up at my house, rolled out a red cloth on my table and then tried to sell me dishes, stainless flatware and a set of pots. She was very sure that in a few months I'd be engaged to be married and I would be needing these things. Haha. <laughs> I've never been married and although I do use these dishes, her implication that I'm a very desirable woman who wouldn't be single very much longer, didn't faze me in the least. I mention flattery later on in this video and this is an example of someone using implied flattery to gain a sale. It didn't work. I'm certain she uses these same lines on all the women she tries to sell to. It's a line. She then went on to say that she knew my father. My first thought was, Oh, oh, but then she said that she admired his art talent, yes, he was an amazing watercolorist, top notch, and she's sure I'm just as talented. Actually, I'm not. LOL that fell flat as well. I was sitting there watching her become more and more frustrated as the night wore on while her sales tactics fell on deaf ears. She ended up selling me nothing. Like I said, I called my friend to stop giving out my number and I have that rule with everyone else who has it as well and I don't give out theirs. I will pass a message with a number on though. Then there are the manipulators who upsize. I had a friend who started by asking for headache tablets and moved up to being pissed off with me because the car I bought only fit myself, not himself, and his family. They start small and move up, extracting more and more of your life's energy for themselves. Manipulators have expectations of you. Some of them already have a role just ready for you to fit into before they've even really gotten to know you. It's because their getting to know you has to do with the fact they want you to fit into their life in some way, to fill a need for them. It doesn't have to do with seeing what happens, or seeing what kind of a person you are and what you can create together. It has to do with their having you signed up for a part in their play. I never used to see the last act out with these people because I'd leave them before that ever happened. They don't want to know who you are. They want to see what you can do for them. Letting these people go was such a relief because I could just be myself again. They would not be willing to compromise either. It was their way or the highway, so I chose the highway. These people are controlling as well. As far as manipulators in the light community, there are many who give away something for free only for the prospect to realize they're being sent to a website that sells them expensive courses or counseling. That's a common sales tactic. It also has to do with obligation. 
it should be clear that the person is in business and that you are dealing with a business person first and a light worker second. Never feel obligated to purchase anything from anyone. Understand your needs well enough to know what would move your learning forward, and then start to look for the solution if you even seek an outside solution. Flattery This is a common tactic by manipulators who tell you how wonderful you are so that you feel obligated to help fulfill their agenda. The game is often you're so great and here I am this lowly person. You need to help me. Bear in mind, folks, that manipulators are many people and they're very common. So many people see them as narcissists, deranged murderers, stalkers, and predators but they are ordinary people as well. I've heard manipulations come out of the mouths of many people who don't fit these extreme categories only. Yes, predatory types use these tactics and even more extreme ones such as denigrating, aggressiveness, gaslighting but manipulators are simply people who haven't learned how to ask for what they need in an assertive manner, or who feel they shouldn't. This all stems back from childhood. If you watch children, they're very manipulative. We think it's cute at that age but some don't outlearn it. When you deliberately stop reading between the lines you can reduce your susceptibility to manipulation. When you take a person at their word, understanding what they're saying by the words they use, and not reading between the lines, helps you to not fall for these tactics. For example, someone who says, I really need to go to London next weekend and I don't have a car, could be hinting that because you have a car, you can drive them. But if you don't read between the lines, your response would just be, oh, that's too bad. If you try to be helpful and say, why don't you take a bus, you may be opening the conversation to further manipulation attempts because the manipulator will see that you're trying to be helpful and they will assume it's a matter of steering you to the issue of your car without directly asking for a ride. If you want to help, then ask them a question that requires they give you a yes or no answer, yes or no being direct speech, which is what you're aiming for. Say, would you like me to drive you to London next weekend? If you say, I hear you need to go to London and you're hinting that you want me to drive you and the answer is no, then the person will probably react adversely. What did a child do when you said no to it? The manipulator will probably continue the conversation throwing all their best ploys at you and you have to keep repeating no. No, 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 as many times as it takes because the manipulator is used to getting what they want by breaking down other people's wills. You may have to walk away to break off the conversation. No. Small word but a powerful one. A good book on manipulation and how to deal with it is, When I Say No, I Feel Guilty, by Manuel Smith. Although dated and the context will reflect that at times, it really helps people who are used to getting sucked in stick up for themselves. Understand the tactics and seeing them in use is also a good way to avoid being manipulated as well. Keeping yourself beyond it, so to speak. So get the book if you want and I hope this video helps you. This text has been added to my Stop Being a Victim free e-course on my website, www.sharonaandevo.weebly.com. Please check the course out. If you are victimized by manipulators you may well benefit from reading the course. To be continued.